jump right into our uh, web development series. This is uh, number six, which you'll be able to get over to cat5.tv slash webdev. And uh, from that website, you'll see uh, we've got a, a very exciting announcement to make in that if you are looking for web hosting, um, so you need a place to actually put your uh, website, uh, cool thing is we've got uh, we've got a hosting company that is uh, partnering with Category Five to provide you with the best possible deal. We have one year of web hosting, a free domain registration, so that's like your your own .dot com. Uh, you've got uh, a two week trial and uh, everything, so a year hosting, free domain registration, all that uh, for seventy dollars US. Wow. So pretty fantastic. That's pretty good. <laughs> uh, what you can do is go to cat5.tv slash dreamhost and uh, use the coupon code cat5tv. It's all uppercase, and that information is also at the top of the page uh, of the web development series, cat5.tv slash webdev. That coupon, as far as I understand it, is never going to expire. So you can use that. Woohoo! As, as far as I understand it, for the longevity of this uh, this series, it should uh, it should still work for you. So even if you're watching this in 2014, <laughs> deep into the future, you should be able to use that ca coupon yeah. code. All uppercase, cat5.tv, and it's cat5.tv slash dreamhost. Uh, okay, so we left off last week at uh, demo.cat5.tv slash 003. Our website currently looks like this. So we've just placed this image here, the wood grain, and we're getting uh, we're getting rocking on the actual layout of our website. So back to our code here. Let's bring up our style.css. We've got lots of people following along. If you haven't yet got the files, uh, you can grab those from cat5.tv slash webdev and you'll be able to actually follow along with us live uh, and ask your questions in the chat room at category five. Dot TV. This is my style sheet, and this is my actual website. So let's find where we left off here. We've got the wood grain in our header area. Okay. Let's bring up our mock up so we can see where we're going. There we are. Okay. So we've got uh, We Make Great Things Happen that's got to go over top of that wood grain and we've got Aspire to Be Great, a uh, little bit of uh, photo kind of thing going on there. So a couple of things that we're going to need to do. Uh, we need to have, we've talked about floats in a previous episode. Um, we're going to have items that are floating left, which is going to be our text. We're going to have items that are floating right, which is going to be the image there. So over here. I'm going to create a new, let's go back here and go to our header element here where we've got just a non-breaking space. And I'll just put in here, for example, um, I'm just going to put the word hello, which is just a test, test text so that we can actually see where that's going to lie. Now we know that that's going to be in the top left corner of that element. Um, let's get connected over to our demo server here and get that uploaded. So demo.cat5.tv slash 004 is going to be our folder, our working folder for tonight. I noticed in the chat room um, last week, Krista, uh, some people were mentioning, well, why don't you just work on it live on the, s on the server and then just it will automatically update. And I should yeah. just clarify, and normally that's, that is one of the ways that I would work, but I want to make, I want to make this mm -hmm. so that people understand the relation between our files, the FTP site, the web host. Yeah, everything versus, that you have to do in the background. Yeah, yeah, because if I'm just opening it remotely, for those of you who know what that means, uh, whether it be through SSH or just uh, through an FTP client that can mount the drive, um, the next person who's trying this tutorial may not be able to do that. And so we want to keep this as universal as possible. Um, those who have access to be able to do something like that know how to do it and they can follow along in that way. Mm -hmm. uh, but we don't want to restrict uh, this to those, those people. We want to keep it as open as possible. So that's kind of my thinking. So now on our website, which is demo.cat5.tv slash 004, 
you see on the wood grain we have black text that says hello so we know that if we put our text in there what was it that uh, your clever wording oh, we I make great things happen let's do it all right <laughs> you remember what font that was uh, that one is Josephine uh, slab I think and I is think it's from Google, it Google fonts API okay so we need to understand what a web safe font is versus any font on your system. As you go through, you know, if you're using your graphic editor or your word processor, you'll see that you've got possibly hundreds of different fonts to choose from. But not all of those fonts, and in fact, very few of those fonts are going to be what's called web safe. That means that basically if you put it on your website, it's going to appear the same for every person's computer. Mm -hmm. Reason for that is they may have come with other applications. They may be operating system specific. They may be um, non-free, you know, so you may you may not be able to get them uh, cross-platform. If you use Linux, you may not have them on uh, on Linux, and, and similarly, if you've got some open fonts on Linux, they may not come with Windows. So mm -hmm. it becomes this mess. So if you if you don't know what are web-safe fonts and what ones uh, are not, then you may end up using fonts that are not going to display correctly. So basically, I mean, you've got a very limited selection, Arial, Helvetica, and I don't even know that Helvetica is truly web safe, Verdana. Um, so most of the Microsoft mm -hmm. core fonts are going to be found on pretty much most systems. Uh, any other ones that you would go with? Um, Comic Sans no. MS. <laughs> Don't ever Never. do that. Even if it works, don't <laughs> do it. The font was created as a joke, I yeah. swear. <laughs> I'll bet you it was. It has MS at the end. <laughs> Microsoft, <laughs> you and your fonts. Uh, okay, so I've got the text in there. We make great things happen. But what, okay, so what we're talking about with web safe fonts, there, there's a, something that can help us, and it's called the Google Font API. All links that we display in, uh, in the show tonight are going to be available uh, in the show notes, category5.tv. This is episode number 186. And of course, it will also appear at cat5.tv slash webdev for the series. But there's the link for you. This is the Google Web Font API. This circumvents the limitation of the web font and gives us some truly awesome fonts to work with. You can see that uh, these fonts would definitely not be fonts that are considered web safe. But through Google's API, we're now able to utilize, <clears throat> utilize a lot of these fonts, any of these fonts that are listed here. Okay. Google.com slash web fonts is what I'm looking at right now. And you knew the name of that, uh, of that font. Josephine Slab, I believe. There's Josephine Sands. Pretty sure there's two. Okay. Josephine Slab, look at you go. Good memory. When you're good, you're good. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I'm going to click on that font. And you'll see there's a couple of things that you can do. You can launch it in the font previewer, which is a cool tool if you're just looking for that perfect font. You can enter your text up here. And you can actually then say, OK, I'm not too happy with that one. Let's try changing our font family to something else. And it is going to change it for you to one of these Google API fonts. In this case, we know that it's Joseph and Slab. So all we need to do is we don't need to download it. We don't need to do anything like that. We just go use this font. And you'll see that it's going to provide us with a couple of different things here. First of all, a header reference tag to a Josephine slab style sheet. So all I've done is uh, triple clicked on that or highlighted it just with a drag operation. Copy that to my clipboard. And now back at my index.php, I'll paste that just below the existing style.css. There we go. So now we've got our style sheet, style.css being loaded, and then this Google API, Joseph and Slab style sheet as well. So now back at, uh, there's still one, one more thing that we need to do in order to utilize this font. And it shows here as an example, 
placing it within the H1 tag. That is a header, and we don't necessarily have to include that in a header. It can be in a class or an ID, uh, wherever you want to put it. So what I'm going to do is instead of copying that whole line, I'm just going to copy the CSS to get Joseph and Slab uh, on, my, uh, on my CSS. So go back to here. I'm going to bring up my style.css, and we're going to go to header, which already exists. And I'm going to paste that, because that's where we want it. Color, number FFF -F -F for white. I expect that was white, eh? I, yeah, I think so. Yes, white. OK. Good call. So we have imported the CSS, added that style sheet to the header area of our index.php. We've added a font family for Joseph and Slab into our header ID. Mm -hmm in the CSS file, and we have uploaded those files. Now, do we have success as far as getting that to, to work? Now, I was, now there we go, OK. Just as things were crashing, mm -hmm. I wasn't sure what was, you know, because I'm trying to operate up. both computers. Uh, but now refreshing, you'll see that the font has indeed changed to this fancy font. It's very small. So what we'll do is we'll get the uh, get an idea of, as to how large the uh, font should be. We're going to bring up our, our mock-up again. And this mock-up contains that font. It's got, it uh, looks like, three different sizes. So I'm just going to highlight with my square marquee there, rectangular select tool, and highlight the first line. And all I'm doing, see, I'm just copying that to my clipboard and then pasting it with edit, paste as new image. And all that that does for, for me is shows me the uh, dimensions up here at the top, 52 pixels high. Okay, So now at my CSS, now I know that it's 52 pixels that I need the height of the font to be. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to create a couple of classes. We've never done that before. Uh, and uh, you know, for John, who's just finishing up school, and yourself, it's like classes are fun, right? Oh, no. So much fun. No, they're not so fun. Oh. But in CSS, <laughs> they can they can. They're be a fun. party in CSS. A party. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna create a couple of classes within our ID. Now an ID is okay. There is one of these on the page. It's called header. A class, on the other hand, is something uh, that can occur multiple times on a page. I could say, I could make a class that's called uh, white, and then that way it would force that font to be white because it would be color equal, or color colon number FFF semicolon for that. Or I could go uh, class equals italic, and I could make it uh, italicize if I want, you know, why would you do that? But just to give you an idea, it's something that you can use multiple times. You could use it for uh, putting a border around things mm. or things like that. So you can understand all that. First of all, OK, so we're going to go span class equals. And this is going to be, uh, what do we call this? Big one. OK? And that's the words we make. OK, so we open and close that span. Then we need a carriage return, a line break. And another class here, class equals, quote, big two, because this is <laughs> a different size. Was it great things that's the next? Uh, uh, great things. We make Yeah, great things. things. Okay. And happen is its own kind of thing. A span is, uh, is uh, going to let us do this without breaking. It's it's like a, it operates kind of like a div, but it doesn't uh, it doesn't put a carriage return before or after, and it doesn't take up the entire width of the page. A span can be in the middle of a sentence, and it's going to not break the sentence up. It's just going to apply style to that uh, to that section. So, okay, so we're going to create another span around this one with a class of big three. Now remember, those are not going to do anything at the moment, because we haven't specified any of these classes in our CSS mm -hmm. file. But we'll save those. And now we're going to go to our CSS file. And I'm going to go ID, OK, the pound symbol, header, 
space dot class, all right, big one. So this is saying, if I am currently within the header ID and I have the class of big one, then do this. And I can put whatever in here I want. So font size, 52 picks. And now we're going to upload both of those files. Refresh our website. We have WeMake is the size that uh, you had previously specified. We can also specify different uh, measurements. We're using pixels because we want it to be identical to, uh, to the mock-up. Mm -hmm. You could also use point, PT, uh, if you want to use the point size of the font. Uh, but here we're specifying an actual height uh, to that text. Similarly, let's grab the height of the next area of text. Uh, in our mock-up, there we are. Same kind of thing that we're going to do. Doesn't have to be exact, to be honest with you. I'm going to go edit, copy, visible, edit, paste as new image. I'm using the GNU image manipulation program, which is a free piece of software. And uh, it's available for download for Windows, Mac, and Linux at GIMP.org. This area, this span, big two, is what we called it. It's going to be 36 pixels high. Krista, you can uh, probably establish, just from what we've learned so far, exactly what that means. So Krista's already created the header ID and the big two span, the class. I'm going to do the same thing. If you're following along at home, uh, that's what you'll want to do as well. What did we say? It was 30. Yes, I wrote 36, but they 36 may be wrong. <laughs> OK, so I'm going to do the exact same thing. And I've added 36 pixels to mine as well. Uh, we can confirm that back at our file if we want to. OK. so. Uploading those, uh, we just need our style.css file to be uploaded because we haven't changed index. Refresh. There we go. Okay. Now, are they? They're not all caps in the uh, mockup, are they? Are all. Caps. Are they small caps or are they, nope, they're, they're all, are caps. all caps? Okay, so we'll get we'll get to that as well. Okay, we're gonna grab happen for big three. Edit, paste as new. Yeah, it ended up way down there, 61 pixels. Okay, so for this particular one, we're going to go with this is big three. Our ID is header, our class is big three, and we're going to go font. <laughs> if I can say it, <laughs> font size 61 pixels. Chris is way ahead of me. And we're going to upload that. Here we go. Refresh. And there we have it. Cool. So next up, we want to make this all caps. But we've talked about it before, how we want to be able to do that in such a way that we're not actually screaming at the search engines mm -hmm. by placing all caps within the code of our, our website. Uh, so we're going to use CSS to do that with the tra a text transform property. And uh, all we need to do is go, and now we've used it. I'm not sure if we used it for, if we used text transform for this particular I instance wanna before. I want to say we did. I think, I think we, we actually did. used it on our navigation. Oh, right, yes. That's right, so somewhere up. Yep, there it is. Text transform, colon, uppercase, under menu. Good call. So I'm going to copy that, OK? And we're going to go down here. And watch what we're going to do is we're going to actually stick that within. Now, here's something. Let's, let's learn something new. Let's, <laughs> we could add that to header, right? No problem. It would work if we put it in header. But let's get a little bit fancier than that, because we know that each of these are going to fall in a span. So let's go. Well, we can do a few things. We can go header, span, right, like that. And now all spans that fall within header are going to have the text transformation uppercase. So that's one way we can do it. And that's probably the, well, beyond just placing it in header, that's uh, uh, you know, the least amount of typing. Mm -hmm. OK? But if we place it in header, in some cases, this is more appropriate, because this is falling within a span. If I place this in header, then if I have any other text in header, then it's also going to become uppercased. In our case here, that's OK. So I can do that, and it's going to accomplish exactly the same thing. 
but in your case perhaps that may not work depending on if you have other text falling within that same ID. So I refresh and it looks exactly the same. Looking back at our comp here, so we need to establish an area here that is going to center our text. So we're going to say that it's going to be about that wide. So just to be real quick, I'm going to copy that and paste as new image. And this is, again, not to actually have an image of that, but just to have a measurement. And there are, you know, I can actually get that just by dragging my mouse, but depending on what application, this may be the easiest way. 525 pixels wide is what we're going to go with. So here, we're going to go, well, we're going to need to have a wrapper within header for our text area. So what we can do, well, let's do this. Let's go back to index.php, okay? And you're learning along with us. We're going to put a div right here. Uh, and we're going to call this um, header left with a capital L. And I'm just going to wrap my text within that, okay? So it becomes a wrapper around that. So now we need to go back here. We need to update all these. I'm just going to copy the word left, paste that after. Okay. I'm just going to make sure that that is going to allow us. So you see we are within header, but we now have something called header left that is wrapping this particular block of text.